Moldex 3D 2023 comes packed with a bunch of new changes, including solver enhancements, new pre-processing tools, project management upgrades, and new molding innovation solutions. So come along and discover what's new in Moldex 3D 2023. To start off, we have a couple of compatibility changes. First off, for Windows systems, we are only supporting Windows 10 and on, so any older uh, versions like Windows 7 need to be upgraded to Windows 10 in order to install this newer version. Linux will utilize the CentOS 7 and 8 series as well as RHEL 7 and 8 series. And finally, Moldex 3D Mesh 2023 will only be available for Rhino 7, so no more Rhino 5 or Rhino 6. Uh, we must be using Rhino 7, and that will be what's downloaded through the default installation package. Even a bigger note is that Moldex 3D Designer and Project have been retired and replaced completely by the, the newer and more modern Moldex 3D Studio. This interface is more powerful. All of the pre and post processing tools have been ported over, and we've found that this user interface has been much more beneficial to a wider customer base. Jumping into solver compatibility and database options, we have included the option to run an HPC with a Moldex 3D cloud. There's two new cloud options. We have Azure and the AWS or Amazon cloud. We do support the Linux cluster employed by the Azure Cycle Cloud Connect. And you can see that procedure here for how to establish that connection. We also support the computing cluster deployment by the Amazon Cloud. And we have a similar procedure for that cloud connection. For the flow calculation, we have improved our venting simulation to enhance the air trap prediction the air zone volume and the air zone temperature slash pressure are going to allow you to see how much air is being trapped and what are the conditions of that air being trapped. Is it going to cause burn marks? Is it going to cause uh, just an air trap in the parts? These are new enhancements that you can expect. We've enhanced our weld line capabilities by adding a new result called weld line strength factor on top of the weld line temperature and weld line meeting angle will allow you to more accurately predict the strength relative to other weld lines and maybe even to other runs. This is going to be as a percentage and this percentage is in reference to the materials modulus. And here's a series of other improvements. We've upgraded the performance for parallel computing with more than 32 cores. Previously, the 32 cores was the leveling out core number, um, where increasing the number of cores no longer really benefits the computation time, um, but we have improved our computing performance for larger than 32 cores, so you do see that benefit. We've improved our calculation for the volumetric shrinkage using our SPS, or the solid state properties for shrinkage. This will allow the communication to the warpage solver to be enhanced, and the volumetric shrinkage uh, will be more reasonable and more accurate to what you see in the warpage calculation. The nonlinear warp now supports an automatic incrementation, which allows for the user to enhance the stability of the solver. If, the, if a divergence is detected, you can extend the incrementation to get a better convergence probability. Uh, resin injection molding has been enhanced for the stability of thermoset analysis for curing specifically. And then fiber and powder injection molding have uh, considered the shape factor for a more stable calculation when going to display the filler concentration analysis results. Some new pre-processing and integration tools that we have included in Moldex 3D 2023. First of all, a new Boolean function allows us to split two objects from one another. So rather than just using a Boolean subtract or a boolean union or a boolean intersection those are the three booleans that were previously available now we have a boolean split that allows you to take two objects and split them based on a face we have the ability to extract a face um, creating a two-dimensional feature which previously in mold x3d was not possible um, we could create 1d features we could create 3d features 
using the cube or the cylinder function, but we could never create a two-dimensional surface. So now we can extract a face and we can, uh, we actually have a lot of functions now that allow us to manipulate that two-dimensional face, such as extruding, revolving, etc. We can create and remove inner features uh, using Studio. Um, honestly, this is more beneficial to do inside of CAD Doctor, but uh, the capability inside of Studio is quite convenient. And then we have a new Extract Channel Wizard, which will take a solid geometry and extract all of the internal surfaces from that geometry. This is going to be very important for cooling channels uh, when you're trying to create a solid geometry of your cooling system. We do still have the extract center line tool, uh, which in the previous version allows us to draw all the center lines through a circular channel. Uh, however, extracting the surfaces directly allows us to model the cooling channels exactly as they were in the mold rather than on a, as an approximation. We now have a bounding box feature, which allows us to join poly surfaces within a given domain. We have a join poly services function that allows us to take uh, different geometries and merge them together. This is different from the Boolean function. This is more for a service to service interaction rather than a solid to solid interaction. Create curves between curves allows you to take two curves and create a number of curves between them. Mostly this allows us to create the center line across a face, which is uh, useful for runner systems specifically. Surface from four curves, uh, this is a 2D function, which was previously not available in Moldex 3D. And planar surface allows us to create a surface from a series of curves that are in the same plane. This is very important for the creation of solid objects in Moldex 3D. Here's an example of the extraction of a runner system and a cooling system. All right, so we have the extract channel wizard, which allows us to extract the, the geometry of our runner system. And you can also do the same for the cooling system. From the cooling system solid, you can create the center lines using the central line tool that was previously available. The runner system, you can use the between curve to create your line defined system, or you can keep it as a uh, solid geometry. You can use the extract face to include any sort of complex cooling channel geometry, and then you get a line defined system such as what's shown here. We've also enhanced the uh, gate and runner wizard. Um, previously, the runner wizard was kind of messy <laughs> in the in the way that it created the runners. So now we've made that solver a little bit smarter and uh, gave it the ability to create a more reasonable runner system. In addition, we've also created a bunch of new junction pieces uh, that will allow for more diverse modeling of a complicated runner system. We've also finally improved the gate location advisor to give a better prediction of where the uh, gates should be located to improve or optimize the flow length ratio. And it also allows you to include more gates in addition to the gates that you've already included on your model. So if you already have two gates like this, you can use the gate location advisor to place additional gates on your model. The capability for the cooling system has been improved as well. So more diverse modeling of things like baffles and bubblers have been included in the solver. And also we've added a preference option to automatically create the mold base and cooling channels during the final check. This was actually implemented in 2022, but now you can uncheck this option in the preferences menu. All right, talking more about the cooling system, we have external manifold design upgrades. Anything outside the mold base will need to be attributed as a hose, and you can include all of the lines for those hoses or even the solid geometry for those hoses in the simulation. And you can add the inlets and outlets to those directly. Some sketch functions have also been implemented to draw cooling lines, cooling channel arcs, and hose bridge curves. And then for the runners, we've also included the option to sketch runner lines and, and runner arcs. These are no different than the normal line drawing functions. Just instead of having to draw the line and then attribute as a cooling channel or a runner, uh, it's just attributed automatically. All right, the quality of the boundary layer mesh generation has been improved. The performance of the quadratic service mesh elements has been upgraded and the offset ratio has uh, automatically been adjusted to its maximum value of three. In addition, inside of the mesher, when you go to your sequence, if you ever stop the mesher at a particular component, 
that point will be saved going forward. In addition, our non-matching measure has been improved. Uh, we also have a new function that allows you to set a reference object and a target object uh, for this matching. So in, in addition to the copy-paste tool, um, you now have a, an ability to set a part as a reference to make sure that the nodes are being maintained on one geometry versus the other. We've also improved the simulation for the non-matching gate. Uh, in many situations, there was a non-matching gate between a line-defined system or even a, a geometry system and the part, uh, so that matcher has been improved significantly. All right, a new tool inside of Studio allows you to simplify the mesh and reduce the overall mesh element count. In this case, we have 240,000 service mesh elements. When we use the new simplify tool, that breaks our number of elements down to uh, up to 10 times reduction. In this case, we impl implemented a simplification ratio of 0.1, which would be a 10 times reduction. After this new mesh is created, we can then rebuild the mesh because obviously this mesh is going to be quite poor quality. But when we rebuild the mesh, we see that the number of faces has been significantly reduced from its original number. So from 240,000 down to 30,000 and from 43,000 down to 4,600. This allows you to implement a an element reduction after the service mesh has been created. This makes it so that you don't have to go back and fix the errors that you already fixed uh, by creating a new service mesh. Uh, you can do this in the while the service mesh has already been generated rather than have to regenerate. We've also expanded the structure for the uh, tools inside of Studio uh, as far as the interaction with mesh. We are able to interact with the solid mesh now. You can see that we have both the fixed mesh from the surface mesh side and the structure mesh from the solid mesh size. Um, this does require the mesh license. So if you don't have the mesh license, you just won't see the structure mesh here. Um, but this not only allows us to interact with the solid mesh, but also allows us to create solid mesh manually if we need to. So for example, for those of us that utilize Rhino for some of our meshing, some of those functions inside of Rhino have been ported over to Studio to allow us to create that hybrid mesh inside of Studio directly. A couple of those include a create by sweep, create by revolve, create between two faces, create Tetra mesh and boundary layer mesh manually, and then create solid mesh from a channel. All right, moving on to the project management and usability upgrade. First of all, the Material Wizards interface has been updated to give a more modern look and to give you more options for interpreting the curves that are output in the Material Wizard. You also have some options for material compare, material search, and curve settings that are much more intuitive and easy to use. We've also included a little bit more control with different unit options. For example, we have liters per minute in the cooling channel settings and kilogram force for pressure control settings. Uh, and there are a couple of others that you'll find sprinkled throughout the interface as well. The cooling channel temperature now has a couple of options. You can refer to the mold temperature instead of inputting it directly, and then you can also select user defined to define it manually. We also give the ability to change the units directly within the process wizard so you don't have to come out of the process, go up to the preferences, change it there. You can do all of that modification here inside of the process wizard. The DOE function now allows you to separate your runs. So if you have a complex DOE where you have eight runs, you can run four of those runs on one machine and then four on, the, on another machine. It allows you to split up your calculation and so you don't have to wait as long for the computation to run. We have created an object management system. Every object inside of moldx 3 d you'll be able to add to a user-defined group. These groups will allow you to separate the toggling of the visibility of each of these groups as well as give a different color to them. This just gives you more control over the model tree and allows you to interact with the objects more like a CAD system. Implemented in the last version was the inclusion of the advanced mode for your snap toolbar. Down at the bottom right corner of your screen you'll see that there is a drop down for your snap toolbar. You can change this to classic mode if you want all of those snaps laid out as individual buttons in your toolbar. You can go to your preferences, 
and change to classic mode for your snap toolbar. The API has also been improved significantly to allow you to set computation parameters for the warp and cool analysis rather than just fill and pack. We also allow you to get material properties from the API as well as enhance the gate location advisor. Creating and running scripts inside of Moldex 3D Studio has also been improved and the process has been smoothed out significantly. The gate wizard now allows you to have more control over the contact with a surface. As you can see here, there is an overlap or a missing piece to this connection. And you can now control the contact type, whether it's extended or subtracted through the interface and the mesher will follow that gate positioning. All right, and wrapping things up with the molding innovation for RTM, we have improved the boundary condition setup as well as the mesh check inside of Studio. Although you still have to do the hybrid mesh outside of Studio typically, we do have more hybrid meshing tools inside of Studio now, but most of the hybrid meshing will still have to be done inside of Rhino. We do have the ability to port over that hybrid mesh and apply the RTM attributions using the Moldex 3D Wizards. We have the ability to map over prepreg meshes using an LS file. You would set your R1, R2 values in the material wizard. You'll apply the properties of that fabric. For optics, instead of just using a single polarized light direction, we now allow you to consider a polariscope set up with a rotation angle. It'll be more synonymous with the measurement tool that's used in typical optics evaluation. MCM analysis is now Im implemented for optics as well, allowing you to see the difference between the first shot optics and the second shot optics. And then wrapping things up, we have an enhancement to the encapsulation module. The, the mesh wizard inside of Moldex 3D has been improved to give a lower overall mesh element count and allows you to implement more diverse components inside of that wizard. Thank you for watching this What's New in Moldex 3D 2023. If this is content that you'd like to see in the future, you can like this video and you can comment below with any video suggestions that you have for the future. Thank you for watching and go beyond simulation with Moldex 3D.